Welcome to this podcast. This podcast is a portion of enjoyment from the Holy Word for Morning Revival for today, on the general topic of, being a vessel unto honor, a fully equipped man of God, by being empowered in the grace which is in Christ Jesus to fully accomplish our ministry in the unique ministry of God's economy, 2024 April International Training for Elders and Responsible Ones, Week 1, Day 2. The title of this portion of enjoyment is, God is Spirit and we have a spirit to contact God, enjoy God, and be one with God. We hope you enjoy the Lord while listening to this portion and we welcome your comments with what you have enjoyed. In the blueprint of God's original intention, man is the center of the entire universe, and the center of man is in his spirit, man has a spirit to contact God, enjoy God, receive God, and be one with God, and as believers in Christ, our spirit has been reinforced with the vivifying, sevenfold intensified spirit. Hallelujah! In God's economy Christ is the center and everything, for us to participate in God's economy, we need to exercise our spirit. God has an economy, a plan to administrate the universe and to dispense all that He is into His people. In His economy He wants to impart, dispense, and infuse all His riches into us, His people. The way we can participate in God's economy is by exercising our spirit. It is in our spirit that we see God's economy, and it is in our spirit that we can partake of all that God is. Unless we know the eternal economy of God, we miss out on participating in what God is and cooperating with Him for the fulfillment of His purpose. This is why we today need to build up a habit of exercising our spirit. We need to build up a habit of living Christ by exercising our spirit, paying attention to our spirit, and setting our mind on our spirit. We all are learning. We all are in the process of building up a habit of living Christ by exercising our spirit all the time. We have not only a body outwardly and a soul inwardly but even more, in the center of our being we have a human spirit. We need to find our spirit, touch our spirit, exercise our spirit, and live in our spirit. The only way we can live Christ is by exercising our spirit. But how can we exercise our spirit if we do not know our spirit? Do you know that you have a human spirit? Do you know that God created us with three parts, a body to contact the physical world, a soul to think and love and decide, and a spirit to contact God and fellowship with God? May we know that we have a spirit, may we find our spirit, and may we build up a habit of exercising our spirit at all time. To exercise our spirit is to fan into flame the gift of God. He has given us a particular gift, our human spirit, and we need to exercise our spirit and fan our spirit into flame. First of all, we need to see a vision of God's eternal economy and realize that we can cooperate with God's economy by exercising our spirit. Second, we need to see the importance of our human spirit and learn to exercise our spirit, even build up the habit of exercising our spirit, so that we may live in the reality of God's eternal economy. God is spirit and we have a spirit to contact God, enjoy God, and be one with God. Zechariah 12 1 is an amazing verse in the Bible, for it equates the heavens, the earth, and the spirit of man. God stretches forth the heavens, lays the foundations of the earth, and forms the spirit of man within him. In God's eyes, these three are of equal importance, and the center is man's spirit. The heavens were created by God for the earth, the earth was made for man, and man was created by God with a spirit to contact God receive God, worship God, live God, fulfill God's purpose for God, and be one with God. Wow, Amen. In the blueprint of God's original intention, man is the center of the universe, and the center of man is his spirit, Zechariah 12 1, Genesis 2 7, Proverbs 20 27. We as human beings are for God, and in particular, we have a spirit to contain God, contact God, enjoy God, and worship God. God has an economy, and the economy of God has Christ as the centrality and universality of God's move on earth. How can we relate to God's economy and how can we cooperate with His move on earth? It is by means of our spirit. If we as God's chosen people would care for God as the Creator and as the Redeemer, there is the need for God to create a receiving organ for us to have the capacity to receive and enjoy all that God had planned for Christ to be. God wants His all-inclusive, extensive Christ to be everything to us in our experience and enjoyment, and this is possible by means of our spirit. We need to pay full attention to our spirit, exercise our spirit, and be in our spirit so that we may receive Christ, enjoy Christ, and be one with Christ. The way God created man is different from the way He created all other things. When He created the heavens, the earth, the fish, the animals, etc., He simply spoke, and they came into being, P.S.A. 33-9. Man, however, was formed by God out of the dust of the ground, and God breathed into man the breath of life. This breath of life is not God Himself nor is it His Spirit but something very close to God and His Spirit with His life. When God breathed into man's nostrils, man became a living soul, and he had a spirit to contact God and know God, Genesis 2 7, 9. 
if man would not have a spirit, he would be like the beasts, having no purpose and no goal in life. Our human life would be meaningless if we did not have a human spirit. If there were no God in the universe, the whole universe would become empty. Without God being the spirit and without us having a spirit to contact God, to be one with God, the whole universe and we are nothing, Ickel. 1-2, 311, Job 32 8, 12 10, 2 Corinthians 4 13, 16 18. The key to our meaning and the meaning of the universe is in the fact that God exists, God is spirit, and we have a human spirit to contact God, enjoy God, receive God, worship God, and be one with God. God is spirit, and we must contact Him, worship Him, in our spirit, John 4 24. The human spirit and the divine spirit should contact each other and become one, 1 Corinthians 6 17. When this happens, the whole universe becomes meaningful. If we do not contact God in our spirit, if we don't enjoy God by exercising our spirit to contact Him in spirit, our human life is meaningless. Man's existence is a life of vanity of vanities, vapor of vapors, and futility of futilities, if man does not contact God by the exercise of his spirit. Blaise Pascal famously said that there is a God-shaped vacuum in every man that only God can fill. Each man desires to know God and enjoy God. Even if someone considers themselves an atheist, saying there is no God, they acknowledge God's existence by simply mentioning God. If there is no God, why even talk about God? God exists, God is the meaning of our human life, and we have a spirit to contact God and enjoy God. There is no way for us to have evolved from monkeys, as some would say, for the monkeys do not have a spirit. They have a body and a soul, but there is no spirit in monkeys, nor is there any way for monkeys to evolve and develop a spirit. The outstanding feature of man is his spirit. God put eternity in man's heart, and only man considers the meaning of his human existence. There is a divinely implanted sense of a purpose working throughout the ages which nothing under the sun but only God can satisfy. Hallelujah for our spirit. Thank you, Lord, for creating us in your image and according to your likeness, and thank you for putting a spirit in us. Hallelujah, we human beings have not only a body to contact the physical world and a soul to think and love and choose but even more, we have a human spirit. Wow, Lord, we have an organ to contact God, enjoy God, and worship God. Praise the Lord for our spirit, our means to worship God and partake of all that God is. Amen, Lord, we exercise our spirit right now to contact you and enjoy you. We open to you and we turn our whole being to you. We want to pay our full attention to our spirit. Amen, Lord, our spirit is the most important part of our being, and in spirit you are so real and so available. Wow, There's a divinely implanted sense of a purpose which nothing under the sun but only God can satisfy, and we can touch the meaning of our human life by contacting God the Spirit by means of our spirit. Amen, Lord, God is spirit, and we have a spirit to contact God, be one with God, and fulfill God's purpose for God. Through God's recovery in His salvation, man's spirit is regenerated, rebuilt, and reinforced with a vivifying, sevenfold intensified spirit. The Bible clearly shows us that God is spirit and man has a spirit to contact God and receive God, but so many today do not see this and some even do not agree with this. Due to the fall of man, men have not only overlooked and neglected the human spirit but even more, they have even refused to admit that man has a spirit, 1 Te. 5.23, Hebrews 4.12, Jude 19-21. Even some believers today think that man has only a body and a soul, thinking that the soul and the spirit are one and the same. However, the Bible clearly shows us that man has a spirit and, through God's recovery in his salvation, man's spirit is regenerated, rebuilt, and reinforced with a vivifying, sevenfold intensified spirit, Genesis 2-7, Proverbs 20-27, John 3-6, Revelation 4-5, 1 Corinthians 15-45. Hallelujah! Some today neglect their spirit, and they even have no spirit in the sense that they do not possess their spirit in a worthy sense. They don't use their spirit and they do not employ their spirit. But we as beloved saints of God need to exercise our spirit, pray in the Holy Spirit, awaiting the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ, Jude 19-21. And we need to keep ourselves in the love of God. We have a human spirit and we need to exercise our spirit to contact God in prayer. When we do this, we enjoy and employ the entire blessed divine trinity. When we exercise our spirit, we pray in the Holy Spirit, we keep ourselves in the love of God, and we await the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ, with the result that we become the new Jerusalem. Amen. Man as a vessel through the exercise of his spirit, was to receive God as the tree of life so that life as a river would flow in and out of his innermost being for his transformation into precious materials for God's building, God's eternal expression, Genesis 1 26, 2-7-12, 22, 1 Tim. 4 7-8. 
The breath of God, which he breathed into Adam at the time of the creation of man, has become our human spirit, now our spirit is God's lamp to contain God as the oil and to give us light, Genesis 2 7, Proverbs 20 27. However, through the fall the lamp of man became broken, and man does not live according to his spirit. Man's spirit became a broken lamp through the fall, but praise the Lord, through God's recovery in his salvation, man's spirit is regenerated, rebuilt, and reinforced with the vivifying, sevenfold intensified spirit. Hallelujah! We believers in Christ are different from the unbelievers not merely because we read the Bible and go to the church meetings but because we have a reinforced spirit, a spirit that is indwelt by the Spirit of God and filled with the life of God. Most people today take care of the law, being law-abiding citizens. They neglect their conscience, which is a part of their spirit, so they are looking for loopholes in the law to break the law and gain more things for themselves. Oh Lord! Some, however, live according to their conscience, and they live in a higher way than others. But praise the Lord, we believers in Christ have a reinforced spirit, a spirit that is regenerated and filled with the vivifying Spirit of God. When we believed into the Lord Jesus, God gave us His divine life. God's life was added into our spirit when we believe into the Lord Jesus. Then God gave us the Holy Spirit, together with many other things such as His forgiveness, righteousness, peace, and joy together with His justification, reconciliation, and His full salvation. All these are in God's life and in His Spirit given to us at our regeneration. Our spirit is a regenerated and reinforced spirit, a spirit that is very strong, for in our spirit we have God Himself as the Spirit to be our life and our everything. Praise the Lord for our enriched spirit, our reinforced spirit. We simply need to exercise our spirit and contact the Lord as the Spirit to enjoy Him and partake of all His riches, and we will be one with God to fulfill His eternal economy in spirit. Lord Jesus, thank You for coming into us as life to be everything we need in our spirit. Hallelujah! We can contact God the Spirit with our human spirit to receive Him as life into us. Thank You, Lord, for Your recovery and Your salvation. Thank You for regenerating and rebuilding our spirit with a vivifying, sevenfold intensified spirit. Hallelujah, our spirit is a regenerated spirit, a reinforced spirit, for we have God as the Spirit mingled with our spirit. Lord Jesus, we exercise our spirit to contact You. We exercise our spirit to partake of You as the tree of life and drink You as the water of life. May life as a river flow in and out of our innermost being for our transformation into precious materials for God's building. Amen, Lord Jesus, we want to be in our spirit today to enjoy God, partake of God's riches, worship God, be one with God, and fulfill God's economy for God and with God. Hallelujah for our spirit.